Yes, sir. Uh, just one question I have. You told me, uh, we heard about uh, that the Vedas say that don't make any images of the God. Yeah. Uh, whoever worships anything uh, which has been created uh, throws himself in darkness, right? The difference between Bhagwan and Allah is that Allah says that if you worship anyone apart from me, I will punish you forever and ever. And I will not spare you of this sin. But nowhere in Hinduism's books would you say, would you see that Bhagwan is saying that if you worship anything apart from me, you will be put in Narak, which is uh, the Hindi word for uh, hell, forever and ever. Now what why I'm saying that to you is the, the concept of God in Islam, Christianity and Judaism is the same in which he feels bad if anyone worships anything else apart from But the concept of the other side of the religions which is Hinduism, Buddhism or those sides the concept of God there I think is more the God of those religions is more large-hearted because he doesn't say to you that I'm going to put you in hell if you don't worship me. Although, although I understand that it is wrong to worship idols, it is wrong to worship created things. But I do feel that because that, uh, I, I somehow feel that, you know, basically God, there is nothing like him, right? So why in the Quran or the Bible or the Jews scripture, we are attributing a human uh, feeling to God that, that, let us say, my father gives me everything, he gives me all the money, and I give that money to the poor people, right? Now, one day, if I forget my father, yeah, so my father will feel bad. But this is a human nature. God is more large hearted than that, than that. Even if I don't worship him, he should have no problems in, uh, you know, he should not put me to hell because that's egoistic. Egoism is a part of human nature, not of God, is okay. what I feel, according to my uh, roots. Yes. Brother Rahul is an old friend of mine, mashallah. Whenever I come to Dubai, no question answer session goes without him asking a question. You know, he's following me since many years. When I came in 2005, when I came last year, and yesterday night, we had a good session for a couple of hours. And though he didn't mention his name, he's Rahul, mashallah. And we pray that may Allah guide him. Inshallah, may Allah give hidayah. And he asks very good questions. Always difficult questions. Very good questions. I like it. It's a challenge for me. He asked me new questions. I like challenges. And always I say he asked a good question. This is one of my last questions, sir. Uh, one of my last questions. Last question before you accept Islam. One of my last questions. <laughs> before you accept Islam. Clarify this, then I'll, uh, I'll, I'll, I, it just struck me, actually I was right, he told He told me he will not accept Islam in public, so I don't know problem. <laughs> no, no, it's okay, will so you I'll, clarify me on this? I'll clarify with you, and I won't ask you to accept Islam in public, we have done that yesterday. Sir, Islam is a glorious religion, and I am, it's given me a lot of peace, and I can say many good things about it, but please clarify and you some told, doubts. I'll clarify, you yeah. told me you have spent most time studying Islam, then what you spend time in getting your degree of engineering? It is right. Yes, That's right. and I enjoy it more. Therefore, I enjoy your questions also. The brother asked a very good question, very attacking, very tricky, difficult question. That he understands that all the religions, Christianity, Islam, Hinduism, say there is no god except one god. Don't make images. Don't make idols. But Islam goes a step further. He will forgive any other sin except the sin of shirk. Surah Nisa chapter 4 was 48, Surah Nisa chapter 4 was 116. Yes. But in Hinduism mm. and Christianity, nowhere does it say that if you do shirk, Allah will not forgive you. Before I ask you a question about large heartedness, you know, nowhere does the Quran say that if you commit a murder, Allah will not forgive you. Brother, nowhere does the Quran say that if you commit murder, Allah will not forgive you. Does it mean that I will go and commit murder? Brother, Repeat again, sorry. Nowhere does the Quran say that if you commit murder, it is the second largest sin in Islam. In the major sins, number two is committing murder of an innocent human being. Yes. After shirk is murder. 
Though the Quran says in Surah Maida chapter 5 verse 32 that if anyone kills any innocent human being, unless it be for murder or for creating corruption in the land, it is as though you have killed all of humanity. But nowhere does the Quran say that if you commit murder, Allah will not forgive you. Allah will never forgive you. Does it mean that I will go and commit murder? No. Yeah, enough. Same way, when the Vedas don't mention that if you don't do shirk, Allah will not forgive you, you should not do shirk. I understand. I understand. Very what good. I'm saying is... You are an understanding person. I'll come to the large added one afterwards. I haven't answered your full question. I've only answered the first part of your first question. I'll come to your large heartedness afterwards. Yeah, I mean... I'll, yeah, I'll, I'll come to it. That's fine. Yeah. But I like, you know, cutting down the questions so that you understand better. Yes. Or if you understand, the other people also should understand. Sure. You know, you're an intelligent person, I know that. Sure. Mashallah, engineer done from UK. Yeah. That's what he told me yesterday. Fine. Now coming to your part of large heartedness. Yes. That you know, all you know, in Islam, if you don't do this, I'll punish you. That is a human nature. That if the father gives money to the son, son gives in charity, tomorrow the son doesn't ask about the father, so father feels bad. It's human nature, I agree with you. God is far superior, I agree with you. Yes. So why does God feel bad? Yes. Very good question, very intelligent question. Inshallah you will get convinced. I won't ask you to accept Islam in public. Oh, sure. <laughs> that we have done that yesterday, fine? Yes. Now, you know, the Quran says, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not require you, you require him. Yes. Now coming to the question. Now I'm making your question more easy. Mm -hmm. You know, why does Allah, why we have to say Allah Akbar, Allah is the greatest? See, Allah asks you to say Allah, Allah Akbar, Allah is the greatest. Say tomorrow if you don't say Allah is the greatest, do you think Allah will become less? No. No. Yeah. Whether you say or not, Allah is already the greatest. Irrespective whether you say or not, it will make no difference. Not even an out of difference is already the greatest. He will remain irrespective whether you say or not. Why yeah. does he ask you to say that is the question. The question is, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows the human psychology. Yes. You know, for example, your mother has a heart attack. And now, you have heard of a very famous heart specialist in the world. Now, if you know he's famous, he will give you some advice for your mother. Another person who's unknown, he comes and gives you advice. Whose advice will you follow? I would follow the advice of the specialist. Yes. Why? Because you know he's number one, he's most famous. Yes. So the reason Allah asks you to praise him is not for his benefit, it's for your benefit. Yes. Because the moment you praise Allah, you will follow his advice. Agreed. By following his advice, Allah will not benefit, you will benefit. Yes. By the doctor giving advice to you, he will not benefit. Yes, you may give him fees, so that way he'll benefit. Yes. You aren't giving any fees to Allah. Fine. Mm, yes. So Allah doesn't benefit anything. But when you follow his advice, the moment you praise him, it is human. When you say, Allah is the most wise, Allah is the greatest, Allah is the most merciful. Most wise, ah, he gives advice, I'll follow. Most greatest, I'll follow him. Most merciful, I'll follow him. So you'd say all these praises not to benefit him, to benefit yourself. Agreed. Yes. So when you worship him, mm -hmm. it does not benefit him, it benefits you. Yes. When you follow the advice of the doctor, mm -hmm. it will benefit if you give him fees. Yes. Fine? Yes. You don't give any fees to Allah. Yes. It benefits you. Yes. So same way, mm -hmm. Allah is large hearted. Mm -hmm. By punishing you, mm -hmm. do you think he will benefit? No. Yeah. By punishing you, he will not benefit. But he is giving you a fear. Why? If you have alcohol, he will punish you. If you have drugs, he will punish you. Whether you have drugs or what difference does it make to him? Now, if he says, don't have drugs, but if you have drugs, I will not punish you. Then will you have drugs or not? You will have. If I give an examination, right? Two no, I won't have. If, I, if I'm convinced it's wrong for me, I won't have. Ah, I don't need that fear of the hell. Yeah, the right. fear of the hell I have to be put in my mind yes, to yes. avert me. God convinces people in different ways. Some people with reason and logic. You are a logical person, you are convinced with logic. Some people want fear, some yeah. people want punishment, some people want reward. There are three, four types of ways which Allah speaks. You get convinced with reason and logic, you are like me. Yeah. You are like me. Yes, yes. Some people, they are not reason and logic. Ah, leave logic. Ha, ah, I will get reward, I will do it. I will get punishment, I stay away. Now, there's a teacher taking an examination. Two plus two is how much? Four. Convinced? 
now there are some people the teacher says okay now in the examination those who write correctly will get plus point will pass those who don't write correctly will fail now when the teacher is telling hundreds of things it's difficult for everyone to remember but if you want to remember you write if you write correct i'll pass you if you write wrong i'll fail you so now the student starts memorizing he starts like you passed to engineering you are afraid of failing yes if yes. you wouldn't have studied you would have failed so teacher said no problem even if you write wrong i will give you part degree will you study no ah mm -hmm. though you are logical yeah. you understand boys law you understand trigonometry you understand chemistry but to remember you have to stay awake you have to slog teacher said no problem you understood you write in the examination right or wrong 2 plus 2 is 3 i will pass you will you study no the teacher says now your aim is to get the degree yeah once you understand if you fail if you fail you won't get the degree yeah so here almighty god speaks logically some people logically doesn't make a difference whether have hellfire is your heaven is there they logic other people you do it you get a reward like when you speak to your child sometimes you speak logically sometimes you say you know i'll give you a chocolate yes sometimes ek yeah. lafa marunga yeah yeah i will yeah. give you one slap yeah so yeah. this is what god knows the psychology of the human being he is a creator sometimes logic sometimes reasoning sometimes reward sometimes punishment but once he says he has to follow he can't lie once he says mm -hmm. he has to follow so he's trying to convince you suppose your son yeah yeah i know you're not married yeah, yeah. i know you're not married yeah. inshallah one day when you get married and inshallah, if your son yes. yes and your son inshallah will marry a muslim inshallah yes inshallah <laughs> so your son when you have a son yeah five years old he wants to jump from 10th floor you say my son don't jump you i want to jump you know it you will die no problem i want to jump one slap you will give him right or wrong yes you will tell him i slap you yes yet yes. if he wants to jump you will slap him a yes. father is cruel to be kind is your intention to hurt him no your intention is to hurt him literally so that he prevents from the bigger hurt yes fine mm -hmm. so here if he says no no i am only acting you know maybe for small time you will think i'll punish you and you don't punish him but if he wants to jump you will not wait till he jumps you will give him one tight slap yeah. the same way god here he tells you this is good this is bad this is reward this is punishment and once he says something he is honest so islam god is the most kind kinder than the concept of god in us why that is that means he is more kind he wants the human being to improve the other god okay no problem even if you write wrong i'll pass you what kind of a teacher is this suppose tomorrow there is a student studying with you he writes wrong answers you stay awake in the night this person plays hooky enjoys writes everything wrong and the teacher says both get first class first will you be happy with the teacher no why you are a very unkind person mm. very cruel mm. unkind not a good human being mm. i am wrong mm. because you believe in justice so besides god being kind and merciful he is also just imagine someone rapes your sister rapes mm. your mother god says no problem I'll forgive on the day of judgment. Won't you tell God why did you? I'm not saying that he should not punish wrong deeds, but he is putting on his own self that if you associate partners with me, along with worshiping me, if you worship someone else, even then I will not forgive you. That's the right thing. That's, Because that's if, egoism. If the doctor says, yes. if suppose the heart specialist tells your mother, see this is a good thing, you know, have only this medicine, nothing else. Someone else says. Okay, have this medicine also. So that heart specialist tells you, if you mix it with something else, the mother will die. So will you listen to somebody else or not? Will you listen or not? Mm. Heart specialist saying, don't have anything else except this sorbitrate. Keep it below your tongue. Yes. Now another doctor comes. You know, I'm a very good doctor. You don't know him also. Mm. Will I you will listen, listen to, to heart specialist? Correct. Yes. Heart specialist specialized, but God is a big heart specialist. So heart specialist, you want to follow. You don't want to follow your creator who created your heart. Yes, yes. So you, being logical, yeah. when you want to follow the heart specialist, when the heart specialist tell you, don't listen to anyone else because they have told you the total truth. That heart specialist can be wrong because he's a human being. Almighty God, when he says, do not worship anyone else besides me, he knows that if you think somebody else is also the greatest, 
and if you follow and follow something wrong it will harm you god does not want to see to it that his creation the harm he is going out of the way to give you an ultimate warning other sins maybe i will forgive hmm. that is one type of murder is one type of sin very wrong second largest but one if you worship somebody else you can do anything you can start murdering you can start having drugs you can start raping it's too dangerous hmm. this is the guidance it is complete because he is the creator he knows no one else is the creator now someone else tries to behave like a creator when god knows no one else can create you it is very dangerous that's the reason he says that following advice worshiping anyone obeying anyone as the creator not obeying normally normally on obey a father no problem obey a mother no problem going against the commandments of almighty god yeah. i have checked up with science this quran passes yeah. the test when i put science to your hindu scriptures it fails yeah. when i put science to bible it fails mm -hmm. so even if i agree with you with my earlier question mm -hmm. maybe this is ambiguous fine mm -hmm. 80% is proved to be 100% correct 20% mm -hmm. is ambiguous inshallah logically even this will be right if i have to put that way 100% of it is proved that it is correct if 20% ambiguous is there i tell you one thing brother your mind hasn't reached that level my mind hasn't reached that level right the science hasn't reached that level maybe 100 years after or 1000 years after it will be proved 100% correct we are limited the problem is in you and me not in the quran similarly but a person who is very powerful a person who is a heart specialist he knows this stuff very well he'll be sure do this nothing else a person who not sure okay have this medicine also have that medicine also so person who is cock sure of himself like the creator almighty god he will give this commandment now he is cock sure you are not cock sure about him that he is the creator yes. once you are cock sure you will follow yes. i am cock sure that this is the word of almighty god you aren't yes so once your research gets complete yes you know very well that the other scriptures don't pass the test yes i challenge you to get any scripture that you know of which even close to the quran no this is the strongest this is the strongest scripture that Finish. i have uh, that's so, for sure so when you know yeah, yeah. i can't ask you to, i yeah. can't ask you to accept because you know we spoke yesterday right okay <laughs> but when you know it is the thing then the ego is in you not in almighty god the ego no, is in you <laughs> i don't have ego and i pray to I, almighty I told god you of all the ones i have I, read this is the strongest i yeah? pray to almighty god you know because i love you rahul yes i love you too <laughs> i love you that very reason i pray to almighty god to give hida you don't have to proclaim you asked me yesterday do i have to proclaim i said no you don't have to proclaim yeah. so i think that you are a person who submit your will to god and may god guide you yeah. and may you get a good good submitting muslim life partner thank you <laughs> thank you the next question was